Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Transformational Talks on a Wednesday with your host, Nate Tanga. Uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. And today we'll be talking about self-acceptance. Maybe just a few words of encouragement. I would encourage, um, you know, to invite your friends, um, even your family members to watch some of these shows and be part of them so that if they have any questions, they can engage with the guest during the course of the presentation. So without wasting so much time today, I'll be hosting Coach Dombi. She's our guest today and she's the self-love coach. So it's about to start. Coach, good evening. Good evening, Nadi. How are you? I'm good. Uh, it's good to have you today live with us. It's good to be here. Thank you so you much know, for inviting me. Thank you so much for accepting, actually, because we, we, I told you, I think I had four referrals for this topic. And I was like, God, please, please let this one be the one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm here now. So thank you, Lord. <laughs> You see, my answer, my prayers have been answered, and today there is electricity, so I'm actually yeah. happy because I remember you you were telling me that you have these issues, so it's good to see that we've got electricity, and I thank God for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, to our first viewer, welcome to our live. Please feel free to engage with us. Um, just feel free to say hi in the comment section. So without wasting so much time, Coach Toby, maybe I should give you the mic since you're the guest today. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself with Coach Toby and what led you to being uh, a self-love coach. You know, I know there are so many coaches, but why specifically self-love coach? There has to be some form of history there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nidhi. Um, my name is Ndombi, and I grew up like everybody else in a situation where society tells you, don't do this, do that, and things like that. So as I grew up, my self-esteem was a bit low. Um, for some people who've known me from childhood, they knew that I was very shy I wouldn't want to stand in front of a camera or anything like that. I wouldn't speak to people. I'd be one of those people sitting at the back, in the back row. Um, when it comes to attending any events, I wouldn't even want to attend any. So as I grew up, I, I felt as if there was something missing from my life. So I then went on a search to see what exactly I can do, you know, for me. And what exactly have I been called to do? Um, I mean, we're all brought into this world for a specific reason. So we all each got a purpose. Some may not know what their purpose is, and it's okay. But I went on a search on my personal journey and found that, you know, coaching is exactly what I should do. So hence me coming in to become a coach. Everything in my life that has happened has led me to become a coach. All the events I've attended, all the learning and skills that I've accumulated over the years, all that has led me to become what I am today. Maybe for the sake of our viewers, to those who, who don't really understand like, well, what's a coach, maybe you can explain to us. Because I feel like a lot of us, we confuse um, a coach and a mentor, and I believe those two people are, are totally different. So for the benefit of your viewers and for those who would want a coach later, and for those who would want to be coaches, maybe you can explain to us um, what does it mean to be a coach? Okay, what it means to be a coach is we help you to achieve the success that you are looking for. So we're not telling you what to do. You tell us the success you want, what you want to achieve and we help you we hold you accountable every step of the way so holding your hand every, every step of the way of the way helping you be accountable for what you want to achieve in life whereas a mentor tells you do this do that don't do this this is the way we hear from you 
you are the one whose life needs to expand. You are the one whose life needs, needs to progress. You know what you want in life. You know what you are aiming for. You, you've got your goals written down and everything. And you know what you aspire to do. You know what you desire. So we help you achieve that what is what you want. That's the goal, the role of a coach. Thank you so much, coach. I hope to have yours. You've understood uh, what it means to be a coach. And I hope uh, some of you will start looking for coaches. Yeah, maybe before I start my story, because I remember I told you that this one, I would really want to do a little bit of storytelling. <clears throat> Because uh, maybe for our viewers, um, you know, I was asking people, what does it mean? What does self-acceptance mean? And I got a lot of responses. Um, maybe as a coach, you, you can tell us, uh, well, what does it mean? Um, you know, when you talk about self-acceptance, what does it really entail? Okay, self-acceptance is more of... Um accepting the way you are, um, whether it's good or bad, being appreciative of the type of person that you are, whether it's good or bad, being appreciative of the decisions that you make in life. Um, it's the awareness of your strengths and weaknesses, in short, that's what I would say. So it's knowing who you are and accepting who you are for what you are and being happy and okay with it, no matter how good or bad you think it is. Remember, it's what you perceive. You might think that other people are thinking, ah, no, this person is like this, but it's not exactly what they're thinking. It's what you think they're thinking. So accepting yourself for all the good and the bad that you carry, that's self-acceptance. Thank you so much, Coach, for that. Maybe just to engage the viewers, there's a comment from Nenyasha. Uh, good video and sound quality, trying to catch up with the discussion. Thank you so much, Nyasha, for tuning in. Uh, please feel free to engage as, as we proceed. So moving forward, uh, I remember I was telling you, uh, growing up, it's, it's something that I really felt like deep down. I was mainly criticized for, for being talkative, like a lot. And, you know, a lot of people would label me with that title. And um, being surrounded by those people who were introverts is something, you know, they, get, they, they got to get all the praises. You know, those kind of things. And it was, ah, cannot And it's something that never really set well with me. Like, I have to be honest. And... I believe at some point in my life, uh, you know, I started learning how to be quiet. But deep down now, you know, I was dying. And it's something I had to break out. Uh, that was uh, uni. So you can imagine, like, how many years, you know, I was living in, in such a space of hating the way I was. I know that a lot of people can relate to what I'm saying. So how best can we get over... Uh, there are certain things about ourselves that I feel like we cannot change. That, that's my opinion. Like, for example, I believe I cannot be quiet, <clears throat> even if I try. I know at one moment when I try to be quiet, everyone gets worried. They were like, are you sick? Or maybe it's society not accepting that I can be quiet or I can change. I, I don't know. I don't know. Coach, please help us. How can people, you know, not suffer in that shell? of pretending to be what they are not because society has got a different perspective of a certain gift or a certain talent that you have? Okay, the main, the main, main thing is to love yourself unconditionally. Um, I know people, we talk about love a lot, but loving unconditionally is not easy, especially for your own self. People seem to think that you can love somebody else when you don't love yourself or you can take care of somebody else when you can't take care of yourself. Say, for instance, um, when you're going on, a, on an airplane, at the beginning, there's that video that's played or maybe the air hostess does the demonstrations and everything. And if you notice, when they talk about the face masks, they tell you that when the face masks come down, put it on yourself first before you help somebody else. That is because while you're trying to help somebody else, you might die in the process. 
and you, mm-hmm. both of you might die because you'll fail to help the next person, isn't it? So mm-hmm. what is important is to take care of yourself first before you can take care of somebody else. So self-acceptance is part of taking care of yourself because you're accepting yourself for who you are, for what you are. You know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you accept the weaknesses that you have and you look at ways of doing things in a different way. We can't say, um, I don't want to use the word improve because I'm now saying to you, what you're doing is wrong. What you are is what you are. You are the person you are. We are all unique. We've all got our unique characteristics. So when you then accept yourself for who you are, you know the characteristics you have, you know the the ones that you're stronger in. So you focus obviously on those, but the ones that you're weaker in, you try and do things in a different manner so that you can at least up the level a bit, or you can at least use those weaknesses to support some of your strengths or to support other things in your life that can help you move forward or become a successful person in life. So for those who feel they are trapped and closed and really don't know any way out, the only way is to love yourself and you have to love yourself unconditionally. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's going to be, it's difficult. Believe me, it's difficult loving yourself. It's It's close to impossible, but you can love yourself. You can love yourself. You can learn to love yourself. And when you love yourself, you discover a lot of things about yourself that you thought were useless things, but they're actually things that can help you move forward in life. Because a lot of times we are blocked. We can't move forward because of some blockages that we put in our way. We put blockages, we put all those roadblocks, we put them ourselves in front of ourselves and that prevents us from moving forward. So society has taught us to believe and perceive things in a certain way. So it's now up to you as the individual to turn those things around for yourself. You know the person you are, you know what you want in life, you go for the things you want, you know what you need to improve on your own within your sphere, within whatever you do, and you move forward with that. So that way you can help at least remove the block. Just know that you are enough the way you are. And no matter what anyone tells me, you are good enough. Thank you so much, Coach. Um, And just know that you are enough. I feel like it's it's one statement. For me, um, I'm trying to believe it. But you know, it's 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 not easy to yeah. get to a point where I I believe that um, I'm enough. So then, what's the difference um, of believing that you are enough at the same time you want you want more? I don't know. Is will there ever be a balance whereby you accept yourself uh, for who you are, and at the same time you, you want more? Is it possible? Um, there's nothing wrong with wanting more. We all want more. <laughs> we all want more money. We all want more of this. We all want a big house. We all want more cars. We all want more of everything. Um, mm-hmm. When we talk about <clears throat> loving yourself, we're talking about you being align- in alignment with yourself and um, doing those things that you know Um, can help you move a step forward so if you fail if you find it difficult to love yourself you need to now engage in talking to yourself have some conversations with yourself every day have maybe a 20 to 30 minute um, session with yourself between you and you talk to you talk about the things that are bothering you talk about the things that you want to change in your life Talk about the steps that you want to take in an effort to move forward because lots of the times we don't want to talk to ourselves. You remember when we were kids, you'd you'd be playing by yourself. Ah, yeah. ah, do that say And then you you wearing your mom's shoes, you going out of the room and you come back, ah, and that's okay, and you're talking to yourself and you are enjoying this conversation and you're talking to yourself. 
So if we're <clears> taking you back to that childhood, when you're talking about loving yourself, we're taking you back to that childhood, back to you being a child, to talking to your inner child, discussing, making a conversation within yourself, talking to yourself. Now, when we put in in Christianity, um, we look at it as talk, when you're talking to God, God is within each and every one of us. God is within us. God is there looking after us. So he's within us, each and every one of us. So when you're having a conversation with yourself, you're also talking to God in a way, if you look at it really, because you are discussing things that you, you find difficult to talk to someone about, or you're discussing things that can help you improve your situation or can help you move forward. Maybe you are blocked somewhere. Maybe there's something that is um, standing in your way and you're trying to move that block off. You have to have that internal conversation. So you need to talk to yourself to really dig deep and talk within yourself, have a conversation within yourself and really you know, make time for you because most of the time, especially women, you are running around with this and that and you forget to take care of yourself. Men as well, they are busy doing this, taking care of the family, and they forget to have that, that conversation, that time to speak to themselves, for themselves. So it's important to just take that time out, even if it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes every day, whether it's in the morning, you set a time to decide whether you want to do it in the morning, when you wake up, or in the evening before you go to bed. That conversation is important because that conversation, <laughs> that same conversation is what will lead you to the success that you want to achieve. So it's important to have that self-talk. And when you're talking to yourself, you lim eliminate criticism, eliminate Nidhi, I said eliminate. <laughs> Maybe Elite. whilst on that, coach. <laughs> mm? Whilst on that, coach, criticism, yes. you know, I feel like the, there's criticism, there's self-criticism and like criticism from, 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 from community or from friends or from, from the society. How, how then, like, do, do we balance those? Because I feel like we, we believe... Um, like, for example, I can give you a very personal example. Sometime last year, <clears throat> when I was in my final year, I had um, I, I went through a, a depression phase. So I really didn't do well um, in school to a point um, whereby, like right now, <clears throat> I don't feel like I'm an engineer that I'm supposed to be. So every time when I decide, like, I want to do something, and the, that thought, like those thoughts and that weakness, you know, all those things, they, they, they start to come back. And at the end of the day, I end up criticizing myself to a point where I feel like, you know, I'm now going back to that depression phase. So self-criticism, how best then can we handle it, especially like more on a personal level? Because I believe sometimes people, they validate what we are feeling. Because if it's something that I'm not feeling, even if it's bad, I will not validate it, but if it's something that actually once came to my mind and they're actually saying it, it's, it's more of a validation of what I'm feeling. So maybe we can talk more about how to handle self-criticism and giving ourselves uh, positive feedback. Okay. Um, with self-criticism, it comes from within your thoughts, right? Your thoughts mm -hmm. can be changed. You can change your thoughts within an instant from good to a bad thought, or you can change it back to a good thought. So thoughts can be changed. They are not rigid. So at the same time, when it comes to criticism, when you find yourself criticizing yourself, you have to be in awareness. Everything that you do, you have to be in awareness of what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. from now on, Nate, it means after this conversation, you now know that uh, uh, negative. there's something going on. So immediately, you can have a pen. If it, it would help you to have a notebook and pen in your pocket all the time. So that when you find yourself talking negative about yourself or anyone, you write it down and say, ah, at the gas station, I said ABC. At Pagat Pagat, I said ABC. 
So when you find yourself talking negative, you write that statement down. In the evening, you do your, your reflection. You reflect on your day, how your day went, what good did you do as a person, what good did you do for yourself, what good did you do for somebody else. And then you now look at your book where you, you had um, been criticizing yourself all day. And then you look and see, okay, so what did I criticize myself about? Was it really worth it? Am I really that type of a person for me to say things like this about myself? No, I'm not. I'm assuming I'm like this, but this is not what I am. So you twist that statement and put it in good light. So you twist that statement and you say it to yourself, say it to yourself as many times so that you internalize it within you. And then you, you eliminate little by little that criticism. So as you then, as you go on your day, you've already told yourself you're not saying any anything negative today. Today it's only good things. You wake up in the morning, you say today is going to be a good day. I'm going to only say good things. Then when somebody, when you say you're driving and somebody cuts in front of you and you want to <laughs> curse, you say, you immediately, you say, no, I'm not going to do that. You say, oh, some people are just so special, you know? That's a special human being. How does it cut in front of me? You know, things like that. You, as time goes on, because you're changing, it's a habit as well, hey? Mm -hmm. Criticizing also becomes a habit because if you do it often enough, it becomes a habit and you're always criticizing. And no matter what anyone does, you will criticize. And it is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So you want to eliminate that from yourself so that you also speak good about yourself because if you notice people who like to criticize they criticize themselves anyway so <laughs> you don't want to be that person criticizing another person because it means you're also criticizing yourself anyway somewhere down the line you've been criticizing yourself and you find it easy to criticize others so that you make it, you make yourself feel better but that's not mm -hmm. how it works you have to love yourself mm -hmm. first be happy with who you are accept who you are and be content with the things that you do, the decisions you make, be happy with the decisions you make, whether they're good or bad. If they're bad, learn from them, move forward and stop criticizing because criticizing will not at all move you forward. Criticizing will block you from moving forward. That's what it's gonna do. So if you find yourself criticizing and you're criticizing over and over, if you look 10 years back, you'll find that you've been criticizing yourself about the same things over and over. And it's a continuous, vicious cycle that never ends. So now that you are aware of this, now that you have watched this video, now that you are listening to what is happening here, you need to take a notebook with you and a pen. When you find yourself saying that something negative or wanting to curse, you write it down and you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm changing my life for the better. So from now on, it is good talk only, good self-talk, good talk to others. And if you look at the Bible, Mark, in Mark, it says, love your neighbor as yourself, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. say love. It doesn't mm -hmm. say love your neighbor, love yourself because you love your neighbor. You mm -hmm. first love yourself. Then you love your neighbor. I mean, Jesus told us to love ourselves first but we find ourselves criticizing ourselves and that is not good for anyone. Instead, criticizing ourselves blocks us from achieving things. So from now on, Nidhi, good talk, good things. It's going to be a good day. That's all you say. <laughs> Thank you so much, Coach, uh, for that self-talk. I think it's something that I'll start practicing um, from today because for, for me, usually what happens, you know, I at some point, I feel like, you know what, I feel like I'm over this. You know, I've managed to handle this. Then there's always that one trigger, you know, that one incident, that one scenario during the day that reminds you of, of, of those certain things. Then, boom, you know, we're starting over again. Then during the course of this conversation, you were actually mentioning um, two words constantly. Love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Maybe for, for the benefit of me and, and others, 
because I feel like the definition of love in this generation, it's a bit twisted. It depends who is saying what and who is receiving what. So <laughs> in the context of self-acceptance, um, what really is self-love? What really is loving yourself? Because sometimes um, people sometimes justify self-love and some people might call it this person uh, has got too much pride, uh, so it's a bit confusing. So maybe at a coaching perspective, what is really like loving yourself? Like, is it me spending money on myself? Um, is it the good talk? But what is it really? You know, what, what makes uh, this loving yourself? Okay. So loving yourself, Nadi, when we talk of, about loving yourself, it's accepting yourself for the person you are and unconditionally loving you for you. So when you start to love yourself, you start to notice things about yourself. You start to become aware of the things that you do that make you the person you are. You become aware of your personality. You become aware of the things that you do not like. You become aware of the things that you like the things that make you happy. So loving yourself is more than um, spoiling yourself. Spoil spoiling yourself is what you're talking about when you say buying yourself something and uh, taking yourself out for lunch. Yes, it's part of self-love. But loving yourself, um, we're talking about you looking at yourself in the mirror, telling you how much you love yourself and being unconditional about it, looking at all the features that you've got on your face, on your body, accepting them as they are and being happy with the person that you are. And you'll find if you're happy with the person that you are, you don't judge the next person. You actually accept the next person as they are. So self-love, we're looking at that kind of love, that love that's unconditional but that's unconditional on you. Kanawaku Zida Manji, that's now something different because <laughs> um, people, uh, people seem to think Kuti, self-love, it's, it's not, it's not. You're accepting yourself and loving yourself unconditionally for the person that you are. When people then find your self-esteem is too high, that's when they end up assuming that no Zida. But because you love yourself so much, your self-esteem also increases as well. So, yeah, that's self-love in a nutshell. So it's, it's being in alignment. To be, to be clear, it's being in alignment with yourself, the child in you. So direct alignment within yourself, with the person that you are, knowing their strengths and weaknesses, knowing what you want to go for and accepting the way you are for who you are. Thank you so much, Coach. Um, you know, you mentioned about, uh, you know, failures. Um, how, how can we move forward from, like, past failures? Because for me, I can say, like, there are some instances whereby, you know, I once did something in the past before. Like, for example, um, I'm that person who likes to try out, like, new stuff. You know, I'm always coming up with ideas and, you know, I want to try one, two, three, four, five things. And But amongst those uh, many projects that I've tried, um, maybe only one or two have succeeded, but the majority of them, they failed. So sometimes it's always that thought, you know, that comes into mind when I want to start something again. You know, that feeling, it always like refers me back to those episodes that I once had. With me. What if you, you fail? Uh, you once tried this, but you failed, you know, like th those thoughts um, of something that once happened, like uh, big, big in our lives. Like, for example, I can also give you another example. Maybe we've got someone <clears throat> who grew up uh, maybe in an abusive family, you know, then they also like get to have that hatred, maybe towards the gender that was very abusive. So you, you realize that maybe those people are not open to relationships or they are not open to love because the thought of having maybe a male person in their life, it always refers them to 
that abuse that they once experienced when they were young. So how best then can we deal with like those past, you say that it's a mistake or it's a past failure, like something that once happened in our past, uh, whenever we try to move forward, you know, it's always, it always has its ways of recurring every time. So how best can we shut up, uh, shut off those um, thoughts completely? Okay, um, now looking at um, past experiences, um, past experiences happened in the past and all we can do is learn from what has happened. We can't change what happened in the past, but we can use what happened in the past to move forward and grow as a human being. So you can grow, um, you can choose to grow or choose to dwell in the past. So some people would rather dwell in the past because it's more comfortable to just dwell in the past and do nothing. Um, it's not easy to go on when you've failed in doing a project and then you start another project. It's not easy. I'm not saying it is. But if you don't try the next project or try whatever it is that you want to do, then how will you know that you'll succeed? And it would be ideal to do one thing at a time. So maybe try one project at a time. But first of all, before you start any project at all, sit down, write down your strengths and weaknesses, know your skills, know what you can do, know what you can't do. And then when you're looking at a project, look at a project and looking at your skills and your strengths and weaknesses and try and align those with the, pro the next project. So look at your project in a way um, of utilizing the skills that you've got, not to go for a project that you know, no matter what you do, you really cannot. At least try and do a project that has got, that needs the skills that you've got. Do that one, make sure it succeeds, then you can go on to the next and run your projects, whether you want to decide to run one project completely or run two projects at the same time, that is up to you. But when you're going for something, you are going to face failures. It doesn't matter how huge or how small that, um, that thing is that you're going for. You are going to face failures along the way and failures are just a stepping stone away from success. So you need to just keep going, never give up. Keep going, keep going. Thank you so much, Coach. Um, <clears throat> one of the points that I got from what you said is uh, it's always good to do like more reviews of what we've done in the past and take out a few lessons of how we can do better. And um, and the, the quote that you said, failure is a stepping stone away from success. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for that contribution. Then on my last point, um, you know, I feel like everyone, they, I know the viewers may not agree, but I feel like everyone is going through this episode of, of trying to fit in, uh, in in certain circles or certain communities. Then you end up facing uh, like rejection. You know, you want to play with someone, but that person, you know, is not forthcoming. You know, how, how can we handle like rejection, you know, trying to fit in? without at the end of the day uh, criticizing ourselves because rejection, it also even stretches into even relationships because you realize that when someone goes through a breakup, they begin to question who they are. Like, am I a really bad person? Am I really worth of love? Or even you, you, you don't even get accepted maybe in a job interview. You know, you, you begin to, to, to think about a lot of things. So I feel like rejection is something that really acts that really um pulls us down and it makes us to to question whether if we really accepted ourselves as who we are or not and maybe just adding on on that part of um you know friends fitting in rejection is there a thin line uh between uh being inspired you know i really want to be like you coach Ntombi, and um really like really changing myself to be you when, when does it become very toxic 
it becomes toxic when you want to change yourself to be like me. <laughs> Be inspired to do what I do, um, but in your own uniqueness. It, it becomes poisonous when you want to duplicate exactly what the next person does. Because remember, we are all unique. We've each got our uniqueness within us. So you are definitely going to be different from me, um, from what you do. And each of us, all coaches, have got different ways of doing things. We are each different. We read different things. We mix with different people. We do our things differently. So what makes you unique is actually your strength, um, Nedi. It is your strength. Your uniqueness is your strength, not your weakness. So you'll find that people will probably come to you because of your uniqueness and leave the next person. So looking at objections, what you're talking about, um objections um come about because people feel maybe they don't trust you or they feel you won't give them what they want so like we we're talking about loving yourself and i'll still come back to that <laughs> loving mm -hmm. yourself unconditionally when you love yourself unconditionally and you become in alignment with yourself there's something that happens in within you there's something that happens within you and around you so for somehow i i can't explain it really because it, yeah it's a bit difficult to explain but i'm hoping you'll get the gist of what i'm saying um somehow it cleanses your air right it cleanses your air it cleanses your energy cleanses the energy around you it cleanses the energy within you so mm -hmm. if you find you, for instance, you find you're in a queue, right? We're in a queue going to, to the bank maybe. So there's two different queues. There's one for deposits, one for withdrawals. Somebody comes, another customer comes into the bank and wants to find out what these queues are for. This customer or this person will look at everybody in the queue. They might ask the last person, which is normally what people do. They ask the last person in the queue, what is this queue for? But somebody else might decide, no, I don't want to ask the last person. I want to go to that particular person wearing a, a pink shirt or a pink t-shirt or whatever. That person is the one I want to go to because somehow there's that light within you that's drawing that person towards you to come and ask that question. So it's the same thing with meeting people, meeting friends. There is something that happens with in the energy sphere, there's something that happens that attracts that person to come and ask questions from you and not the next person. There's something that happens that attracts, there's that light that's within you that draws that person to you so that you guys start having a conversation. Sometimes it might be you who decides, no, I just want to have a conversation with someone because that's the type of person that I became as well through self-love, I didn't mind who it was. I would have a conversation with almost anyone. It, it didn't matter whether they've got a light that's drawing me towards them or not. But you'd find that after that conversation that you've had, that person that you're talking to is feeling a lot lighter. Maybe there's something that was bothering them, but there's something that you said within that conversation that has made them think differently or made them see things differently or have and may enlighten them in a way. So you'll find with rejection, it's not that um, people hate you. It's people, somebody wants to trust you, but sometimes people reject you because they're not supposed to be within your circle. You are moving. Remember, you each time you are going through your personal development, each time you're learning something new, you're learning a new skill, you're reading, you are learning more, other people remain at the level that they are because they decide that that's not what they want to do. But you decide that you want more and you keep learning and you keep learning. A gap opens up. So as that gap opens up, it's either they catch up to you or they let go. So when you look at rejection, 
know that some people will reject you because they're not supposed to be within your circle or within your friendship or whatever, within anywhere near you. Some people reject you because of that, but other people reject you because they feel they don't trust you. So rejection is not a bad thing. It's okay to be rejected. Because remember, there's somebody else who's waiting to say yes to you. So even if you're rejected by 10,000 people, someone else will say yes to you. Remember Walt, Walt Disney, he had so many rejections before he was given a yes. So, so many. So there are so many people to talk about. Um, KFC, before it started, he had so many rejections before he got a yes. Otherwise, if he had dwelt on those rejections, <laughs> KFC wouldn't be here today. If Walter had built on all those rejections, Walt Disney wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be watching these Disney films that we love so much, you know. Mm -hmm. So rejection is not a bad thing. If you're rejected, move on to the next. Thank you so much, Coach. Um, we've come to the end of question and answering uh, session. Uh, for now, I'm going to the comment section. Uh, please, uh, to my viewers, please, please ask as many questions as you want. Uh, Coach Ntobi is with us till eight o'clock. So do not miss this opportunity to ask. So coach, I'm going to be reading out um, the comments. Uh, if there are some that you want to address or to mm -hmm. add on to, please feel free. So there's a comment from Gamtrai. She said, mm -hmm. through that, uh, sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves while doing things for others. So would you want to comment on that? Um, I think it's actually a statement that I said within <laughs> while we were talking, that, but it's very true. We do forget to take care of ourselves while we're taking care of others. So we need to take care of ourselves first so that we can be able to take care of the next person. So love yourself, take care of yourself first, and then you can take care, better care of the next person. True. Uh, there's a comment. There's a comment from Denzel. It's true. All parts of progress begin with self-love. Doubting oneself is a major problem in people's lives, leading to a loss in success. It's important that the subject be taught well, is brought out, so that people are not instead are not instead too critical with themselves or in love with themselves but just positive, healthy love. So on this one, uh, Denzel, uh, well said. The good news is um, I've uh, linked uh, Coach Tombi's um, pages. Uh, I, I, I linked the links to her pages. You can follow her on social media, especially on Facebook. Uh, she's a self-love coach. That's what she's trained to do, to teach you guys about self-love i was actually talking to you telling you that god is going to punish you because they are not posting so much content <laughs> on your facebook page about self-love <laughs> so that will be corrected <laughs> yes. so denzel feel free to engage with caution to me sometimes you know we don't really have to wait for for this platform it can be on different platforms i i, I believe that she's very open if you communicate with you so that you also become an ambassador uh when it comes to spreading this this message maybe constant you would want to add on to what i was saying i uh, know you have said it all Nedi. <laughs> you have said it all <laughs> Um, feel free to contact me. I think uh, Nidhi is, um, she has put up my numbers. Um, you can get me on WhatsApp, on Facebook. WhatsApp is, is direct. So if you need to contact me for any coaching or you need help with anything, you can contact me on the numbers that uh, Nidhi has posted. So I'm available for coaching. Yeah. Yes. If you don't post on social media, I repeat, God will punish you. 
<laughs> yes, well noted, Nedi. <laughs> then there's a comment from Nonto. She said, yes, good self-talk, interesting. Nonto, I hope you were answered. If you've got any more questions, please feel free to ask uh, Coach Tobis here with us for the next 15 minutes. There's another one from Chris Mary. Another thing that helps me is when I start something new is I tell myself that what is the worst that can happen if I fail? If I won't die, then I might as well do it because I will still be me after I fail. I may be coach, you know, you can talk yeah, about well this. Said. <laughs> Well said. Uh, he says, if I don't die, then I'll still be me. Uh, I like that very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What have you got to lose? Honestly, just go for it. Yeah, true, true. For, for, for me, it's, it's always about the experience that I get out of everything that I try. Because one of my, my mentors always says that experience, I don't know some of these things you need to give them a try. Uh, you, you never know what if you succeed. So it's always that one mantra that I always move with. But what if I succeed? Though now uh, there's something that is actually going on. And the most weird part, that mantra is not working, Coach. It's not working. I'll tell you about it. But it's not working. I don't know why. <laughs> then you need to talk more um, about that. Yes. Then there's uh, a comment from Nenyasha. Rejection is brutal, and from personal experience, the best way to do with it is to accept the situation and learn something positive from it. It's not as easy as it sounds, but staying positive every day keeps you alive because the goal is to stay alive. I agree. Uh, maybe, Coach, do you, do you want to add or subtract or multiply? Yeah. What Nenyasha <laughs> is nothing to subtract. Nenyasha <laughs> has said it well. He has said it well. Being a positive always helps. Yeah, an, an objection can be it can be painful. It really can. It really can be painful. But le- like what he's saying, learning um, positively from that rejection will help you. And I think I can I can testify to, to to rejection like through this line of work, you know, when you're looking for for speakers, you know, you, you reach out to someone, someone doesn't even respond, not at all. They they just keep quiet and pretend as if they haven't seen what you've said. So I uh, I agree. It's it's really quite painful. Very it can be very brutal. I, I agree with you, Ninyasha. Uh there's a comment from Denzel. Uh, be inspired to do what you do in your own uniqueness is a move that needs a lot of courage because as people who are used to copying the behaviors and attitude of others because of fear of difference. Because of fear of difference in our ways of doing things, because of in our way of doing things different from society. I think those who do what they do in their uniqueness become famous in life. Thanks. Coach, I feel like you can comment on this one. I feel like you can, you know, you can add more more fuel to this one. <laughs> um, uh, Nidhi, um, yeah, like he was saying to say, um, trying to copy what somebody else is doing, it may not work for you. So with your uniqueness, you've got strengths that can help you uh, move to the next level in your life. So all you need to do is to take time out for yourself, like what we were saying earlier, that have at least 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes uh, in the morning or in the evening to yourself, having that self-talk, discussing about what you want to change in your life, the things that you want to make better for yourself, writing down your strengths, knowing them, and moving forward. So, yeah. Well, that comment was was a good one. Yes, and I I feel like I have something to add on. Um, From a personal experience, as someone who did engineering, you know, I always 
have people asking me this question you know you you did engineering but you know well, why are you doing this so it's always uh, like what you said if you decide to be different from the norm of you know of engineers because i feel like female engineers or engineers in general they are pictured in a certain way so the moment you decide to do things a little bit differently you know no one will really like encourage you but you know what you're doing it's good i personally i was quite fortunate because i had people who were very very supportive but i believe um if that support wasn't there it was going to be very 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 difficult so i'm really thankful to those um who have helped me to be where i am today uh moving forward uh candy commented rejection is the fuel to success but is it really true though can can we call it the the, the fuel to success <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can call it the fuel, but that's the term that she's decided to use. <laughs> so in a way, she's saying that rejection should actually push you to keep going. Mm -hmm. So rejection should push you to keep going so that you get a yes. So if you get one rejection, keep pushing, go to the next, keep pushing until you get a yes, and then you push for more. So we use rejection. So what she's saying is use rejection as a motivator to move forward. He actually said uh, dust up and move. But I feel like a lot of us, we don't have guards, you know, to for, for many it takes time <laughs> to to see it as a fuel. Mm -hmm. Because for, 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 for many it feels like it's a loss. I don't know, it's just my opinion. Maybe Kendi, if you are yeah, still online, you can explain to us. <laughs> it's true. Many, many, for many people, it's not easy to move forward. It's it's more comfortable to dwell in the past, to dwell in the failures and keep telling yourself why this happened, this happened because of that, this and that. I can't move forward because this happened. It's very easy to do that it's not easy to move forward. So you have to be comfortable or have to learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Only that way can you move forward. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, there's a comment from Chris. I knew I had some motivational speech in me. Even Coach agreed and the well said. <laughs> <laughs> So he should. He needs to now, um, you know, develop that skill. He needs yes. to develop that skill. We want to see him talking here yeah? on on, on transformational yeah. talks. Yeah. Yes, Chris, I'm coming to your inbox. <laughs> you need to. You've got some endorsements. Uh, then the last <laughs> comment is from Nenyasha. Uh, great time with you, Coach Ntombi. Keep up the good work, Nedi. Gotta leave early. Thank you so much, Nenyasha, for tuning in and for contributing, you know, because I believe uh, the comment section is what keeps the, the discussion going. At least it's good to know that people are actually listening. They're actually taking time to listen to everything that is being said. So thank you so much, Nenyasha. Uh, I hope to see you again this Friday. So coach to be this Friday. Um I'm doing a main mental health. So I think you know Coach Tafad Waferedo. I think he calls himself Coach Swag. I don't know if you're familiar with him. So he's got this initiative uh, about boys club because he feels that uh men and boys are actually being left out in a lot of things. So we'll be talking more about that Niyasha. So I hope you're going to tune in. So if there are no more questions, uh, I leave this one minute to Coach Ntombi just to give us your last words before we close. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, um, Nidhi. Thank you so much uh, to the viewers for tuning in and listening in on the show. Um, I hope you got something from our discussion. Um, we are here to help you become the best version of you or become a better version of you. So feel free to contact me or Nedi at any time if you need assistance. Um, 
I just want to remind you once again to love yourself, um, eliminate criticism from your vocabulary, um, use positive talk all the time and practice gratitude, hey, practice gratitude every day. Um, practicing gratitude will actually help you to reduce stress in your life. So practice gratitude every day. Be thankful for what you've got. I know it's not easy. Sometimes you may not have much and you may feel, um, well, I've got nothing. What is there to be thankful for? But the fact that you are awake and you're tuning in right now and you're listening and you can hear the fact that you can smile, the fact you can breathe, the fact that you can jump, you can laugh, you can smile, you can stare at the clouds, you can smell the fresh air in the morning, you can listen to the birds singing outside. That is something to be grateful for. So you need to just remain positive, um, be in positive light, and that positivity will also attract positive people towards you. And you'll begin to see that your circle will change. If you had a circle of friends that was full of negativity and you start being positive, slowly, slowly, that circle becomes to, it's, it starts falling off from you. Uh, and you start attracting people who think like you. And that's what you want in life. You want people who are positive, who move forward with you, who are less stressful because stress comes with a lot of baggage. It comes with diseases. It comes with a lot of pain. It comes with a lot of unnecessary things that you don't want in your life. So stay positive, practice gratitude, love, 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 love yourself unconditionally, no matter what, and accept, accept yourself with the curves, the curly hair, with the, you know, yeah. <laughs> I like the way you are. <laughs> with your beautiful face, know that you are enough the way you are, you are beautiful the way you are, you are made that way for a reason, everyone is unique, so we are not going to be the same we're not going to be the same in skills. We're not going to be the same in looks. We are all unique in our uniqueness. That's what makes us the powerful people that we are. So love yourself and take care of yourself, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love you all and hope to see you again next time. Thank you so much, Coach Ntombi. Um, you know, uh, those were like really good closing remarks. I don't think I have to say anything. Um. <laughs> Maybe just to thank you <clears throat> for creating time to be part of us. You know, I believe that a lot of people were helped. And to those who are going to watch afterwards, definitely they're going to be helped. And to our viewers, we've managed to make time to share uh, their contributions with us uh, during this live session. Thank you so much. And to those we've invited Others, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we've come to the end of our presentation. If you've got any questions to Coach Ntombi, please feel free to visit my inbox. To those with my WhatsApp number, feel free to visit my WhatsApp. Then I will link you up with Coach Ntombi. Coach, once again, thank you so much. Um, definitely, we're going to love ourselves unconditionally. Um, the self-talks, definitely I'm going to apply them and, you know, to also minimize the, the criticism, the self-criticism and to accept rejection because I feel like the best part about rejection that I got, it's when you said um, sometimes as you develop, as you do more of self de of personal development, you know, you leave some people behind and it's okay. And sometimes it's also okay that people don't trust you. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I can go on and on and on. <clears throat> and to our viewers, I would hope to see you again this Friday uh, with Coach Tafadwa as we talk about men mental health. So cheers. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much, Nedi.